What a crowd, what a crowd, you kidding? <laughs> now I tell you, I come over here, you people, you help me forget what I went through this afternoon, you know? <laughs> like that continuity, huh? <laughs> now, really, this afternoon, I'll tell you what happened. I went to join a health club, you know? I had a sign that said, look better in 10 days or your money back. I gave the girl my check. She said, keep it, we're gonna mail it back anyway. <laughs> Oh, no, I tell you, I try to be a right guy. I never get a fair shake, you know? I was gonna take a little vacation. I suppose some guy works in a travel agency. He told me I could spend six nights in Puerto Rico. No days, just six nights in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I said to him, well, I do myself days. He says, you can do whatever you want. Just keep out of Puerto Rico. <laughs> I tell you, I don't get no respect from anyone, you know? No respect at all. But one time I was drowning. I was yelling, help, help, and the lifeguard came over. and said, all right, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> I don't know, I tell you, sometimes I think back, you know, I remember things when I was a kid, it was the same way, I got no respect. One time my old man, he took me to a carnival. We went to see the freaks. The owner looked at me. He told my old man, get the kid out, he's distracting from the show. <laughs> and the trouble with me is I'm too easy go. I mean, I got a couple of kids, I'm nice to them, they got smart answers too. Last time I had a kid had a birthday, I took him to Coney Island, you know? I asked him if he wanted to go to the crazy house. He told me to save my money, we'll be home soon. <laughs> I tell you, I try to figure things out, I can't. I've been every psychiatrist in New York. My whole life is psychiatrist. But when I was a kid, eight years old, and my parents, they sent me to a child psychiatrist. I went for a year and a half. The kid didn't help me at all. <laughs> hey, sometimes I say to myself, what's going on? I mean, lately, I'm so mixed up, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I noticed last week my gums were shrinking. I went to see my dentist. He told me I'm brushing my teeth with Preparation H. <laughs> my dentist, that's another beauty, my dentist. You kidding? It cost me $5,000, had all new teeth put in. Now he tells me I need braces. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm at the end of the line, you know? I don't know who to believe anymore. Like Dr. David Rubin, he wrote a best-selling book, Everything You Always Want to Know About Sex. He left out the most important thing, where to get it. Great crowd, great, great, great crowd. crowd. Oh, one great. place you can relax over here, no kidding. You got right. communication going for you, that's the whole thing. Especially you know? tonight. Tonight, great communication. That's you one of the are funniest. too much. I was silly, you know, silly, silly mood tonight. I was backstage in the field, breaking up with the whole thing. What the hey? What? Give me the bird. <laughs> Remember those old burlesque sketches? Uh, yeah. That's one of the funniest lines I've heard you do in a long time. You do a lot of funny things, but about getting the new teeth, and the dentist tells you you need braces. Right. That's a funny, funny line. I thought of it right out there. Really? <laughs> Good no. word, but that's, that's a good line. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a funny line. Tell me about the book, now that you're a big author. Oh, this is a very interesting book. I spent four years of research and doing it, a year and a half in editing. Can I read the thing on the back? I didn't see that. Well, go right ahead, sure. It says, this book is ridiculous. This man is nuts. He's an idiot. He should never have written it. He deserves no respect. He ruined my life. I cook very good. He has no business to open a restaurant. My children are very healthy and happy from my cooking. In fact, as you read this, I'm trying to make arrangements to have him put away. Mrs. Dangerfield. <laughs> I didn't see that go out. <laughs> well, that's, uh, it's a very interesting book. I told you, four years of research I went into it, and a year and a half, <laughs> and a year and a half of editing. And I want to thank my dear friend who helped me editing it too, Dr. Vinnie Boombots. He assisted me. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Vinnie Boombots. He, he assisted me in the whole thing in editing. And, uh, <laughs> it's a wonderful book, really. And ch in fact, chapters four and five are devoted completely to heartburn. I didn't know <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm Johnny, I'll tell you this book here. You can give it away to a friend, a neighbor, a relative, a girl who ran out on you, anybody. And if you hold it up to the light and twirl it around, <laughs> you'll see your sweetest mistress in the nude cooking some beef fondue. I mean, that's what <laughs> By Vinnie Boombach. Vinnie Boombach, he did the editing of the whole thing. It's very well, I... Book, you know, well, very what do you get book, for that? Well, that's a... Yeah. Pretty good. You expect it. this is in, no, it really is this is in the bookstores, I suppose, in time, yeah, for the Christmas, time for the Christmas market, huh? Oh, yes, and it's spiced with humor. 
Why? Spiced with humor there. Very respectable recipe, spiced. It's uh, so spice. hundred, ec- very economical, very easy to make these things, you know what I mean? Very easy to do it. It's a very interesting book, and uh, it's got cartoons, too, as you notice. Yes, it has <laughs> cartoons in there. Let's see what you remember now, since you wrote this book. How do you make potato... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Here's one of the easy ones. How do you make potato mounds? You go to a chef in a restaurant and pay him off. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do this first, and now, a sneak preview of tomorrow's dinner. Uh, It's a special day for you, we found out. We didn't know it, you didn't tell us. Uh, But the staff found it out. This is your birthday. No, no, don't Give him the cake. <laughs> there you are. Can I take this back? I've got an anniversary in my place tomorrow night. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That's really very, very kind. Forget the happy birthday, Roger. Uh, <laughs> it was just that we had a good deal. That's very and, kind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We did the way this show is going, is going to end up my face before the oh, night no. is over. I got no. a feeling. Well, hey, boom. You know, you know those things. Remember those things where he says, yeah. give me the cake. Give me the cake. Oh, wow. Give me the cake. <laughs> don't mm. give me the cake. No. Okay. <laughs> don't give me the cake. There's no place to go if we start that. No, no, if we start no. throwing this cake, then the show must end. No, don't, 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 <laughs> don't give me the cake. Don't give me the cake. Right. Thank you very much. That's what I mean by communication. When, you know, it's beautiful. <laughs> I don't like the look of it. I don't like the look of it. You want to be down a little bit? No, that's You want me to sent this over I'm here. I'm now being nervous for the whole show. Yeah. to get the cake in my face. No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I would never do that. Not with a candle in it, anyway. No, no, that, <laughs> that was smart. That could be... Sure. Uh, oh, 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 that, could, oh, oh. that could be up your oh, nose oh. to Pittsburgh. No, I would never hit anybody with a cake unless you had prearranged on a sketch, because that is not fair. That's right. To throw a cake or do something like that to somebody. So I'll set it over here. Oh. <laughs> 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 Well, I wonder what's going to happen tonight. Uh oh, here comes the cake now. Um, uh, no. is, is it impolite to ask you how old you are, or do you care? Does it make any difference? No, I tell the truth. I tell the truth. I'm 29. I don't know. No, I'll up to you. I'm 51 years old today. That's oh, true. I didn't believe that. No, I'm 51. That's true. You, you do not look it. I don't know. I'm 51. I mean, I don't. Uh, I meant that. You really don't look it. No, I can lose. Uh, I can lose 10 pounds and say, hey, I'm 46. But well, what the heck? I mean, tell the truth. What's the difference? You know what I mean? That's why I feel. Be truthful. That's the only way you find communication in life. <laughs> Be truthful. <laughs> You're on a communication kick tonight. Well, that's what's been bothering me. Because the yeah, the reason why you gotta have communication, and this is one place you have it here. You can relax, and that's right. the only way you can relax if people can communicate together and then get along good. Well, you we're know? certainly and, doing that. And that's why, like, uh, that's important. That it really is. <laughs> In fact, I was uh, uh, this the other night. I was talking to one of the pa- one of the patrons over at my bistro. Ah. And uh, he was engaged to this girl, and they broke up because of lack of communication, oh. plus the fact that he had six dogs. And she didn't like dogs. I think men love animals more than women. They really do. They really do. I mean, look at all the guys who are so happy when a rabbit lives, you know? (laughs) I never thought of that. I mean, a lot of men and women, they don't relate. You take an average guy who makes love to a girl, right? Uh When they're all finished, what's the first thing that comes into his mind? How do I get out of here? (laughs) You know? You gotta have communication. That's communication. And guys, guys, you can't figure guys out either. I yeah. know a guy was going with this gorgeous, beautiful girl. Uh-huh. Left her for his wife and kids. No. <laughs> Didn't know that. How else can you relax without communication? You gotta have communication. You mentioned 42nd Street. I go there occasionally. I find out sexy movies from Denmark. You right. go in there, you just relax, forget everything, take a different world. I saw one last week, too. You know, what? Wow, this is a little different to the sexy movie. You know, they spoke in English, but the sex was dubbed in. <laughs> It's an unusual experience. A very, very unusual experience. But well, that's yes. communication. You've oh, got to yes, communicate. It is, definitely. As a matter of fact, I knew it was going to be a wild movie because when I walked in, a real sexy place, you know, a big naked blonde showed me to my seat. And I was so embarrassed, I told the guy, put on some clothes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to look for some communication. Right yeah. after New Year's Eve, I'm going over to Hawaii. I mentioned oh, that really? the Friars Club with you and that. I'm going to Hawaii right after New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, who's going to work my place? No. Belly dance. We have Little Athens. 
Little, little Athens. Athens, belly dance, and anyone who comes to my place don't get brushed with Little Athens. She calls her boyfriend Big Dominic. You know what that means. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Only about this short, That's, right? Oh, fair. Put you right away, you know. And uh, <laughs> but I'm going to Hawaii, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to stay there at the, uh, the Sheraton Waikiki uh, Hotel. Waikiki. That's what I say, Waikiki, you know. <laughs> no, as a, as a matter of fact, you were very big in Hawaii. You know? I didn't know that. I spoke to the uh, Italian vice consulate who goes to Hawaii, and uh, he, yes, he's the Italian vice consulate from Italy, mm -hmm. and he's in Hawaii, Guido Salmaggi. I mentioned his Guido name Guido Salmaggi. <laughs> Guido right. Salmaggi, and he, he sang at my club too, you know, and he did. <laughs> and he's the Italian vice consulate, can I, and he, can, he's watching. Can I just see in Hawaii, can I just say hello to sure. one second? Yeah. Hey, Guido, aloha! <laughs> you know. uh, you know. And he'll be there with his cousin, Tulio. Tulio, Tulio will be there. Tulio, Tulio and Guido. And his nephew, Romeo. <laughs> no, but I'm going to Hawaii. You're really going to Hawaii. You're going to work there. No, no, I'm not no, going no, to work there. Vacation there. Vacation there. Work all the time, you know what I mean? Of course you can. sense of work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sense of working all the time. I want a vacation there. You know, a lot of people go for all kinds of money for vacations. You know, oh. I'm, I'm very simple. Are you? Just give me a beach, a pair of shorts, and a t shirt with a woman in it. <laughs>